Come on, let's get nuts. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What is happening? Oh, how's everybody doing today? It is Wednesday. Let's get to humping. Hump day. How we doing out there? Good. Yes, it is March 8th. That's right. Uh, next time you guys see Film Junkie Live, we'll actually, uh, you know, it'll still be daylight. You know, daylight savings happening uh, this weekend, of course. What is happening? Make sure you guys smash that like thumbs up. Do all that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you know when I'm doing this stuff. And then, of course, share. Share it. Share the stream if you would. You know, it does help. It definitely helps. And then, of course, follow me on all the sock meds that are around me right there. Do it. Come on. Do it. Do it. All right, guys. Who's out there? Let's see. We got Corey. This is no other character. There is no other character he could play. Cavill is Superman. That's like replacing RDJ as Iron Man, then saying he still has to play the in the MCU as someone else other than who he's really meant to play. Well, first off, these are actors. And yes, Henry Cavill could play something else. Because, I mean, if it's not the same universe, you know, there is that. Okay? I mean, as much as I, you know, he still is my favorite Superman and everything like that, still an actor. And if there was a new MCU, like a different MCU, I mean, obviously there could be somebody that could still come back. So I, I just don't look at it like that, necessarily. What's going on, Patrick? I don't know why so serious. Love Supernatural prequel. Good. All right. There you go. Ryan, finally caught you all in my new computer. <laughs> okay, cool. New computer. Good for you. All right. My condolences about the request decline. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that, of course. What's going on, Tet? Always oh, good to see you. We got Miss Nighthawk, Steph. Hi, darling. Hi. What else we got? Who else we got here? We got Fear Jason also right here. Come on. There you go. All right. Pushing buttons. All right, Fear Jason, good to see you, bud. All right, we got uh, bringing back Tomahawk. How you doing? Oh, no, not Hope. Don't give me Hope. Hope on. Tina. What are we talking about here? I doubt he'll do it. Yeah. And we got uh, J.D. McRae right here. Let's get it. Team Rad7. Good to see you. We got Stephanie T. as well. Emfer, what is happening? All right. Good to see everybody as per usual. Let's see who else. Anybody I missed? Yo, what's going on? Darkness under the hood. Creepy. But it's okay. It's creepy. All right, uh, let's see. I partly hope Henry Cavill doesn't partly hope. Well, there you go. Partly. And then, uh, oi, oi, there we go. And uh, when Sir Joshua Hamilton, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Good to see everybody. And then, yes, I see some pe people saying happy International Women's Day to all the ladies out there, you know. Always good. And then, yes, of course, you think about that. Uh, yeah, you do. I think Deadpool, the first Deadpool, is always going to be, you know, reminding us of, um, you know, happy, inter you know, when they were going through all the holidays and they decided to make uh, fun of the whole, you know, happy International Women's Day where essentially um, Wade is getting pegged. Yes. I mean, <laughs> it's a funny scene. It's a funny scene. It's definitely a funny scene. So, uh, you know, if you uh, let your, is it let your woman peg you day? I don't know. It's a Wednesday. It's hump day. You know, you guys do whatever you guys want to do. I'm just saying, you know, it's just, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not going to I'm not I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. But yes, happy, happy uh, International Women's Day to everybody out there. So, yeah, um, hopefully you guys have a good day. You know, it's Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. So at least we're halfway through the week. I know today was just kind of like ugh, whatever. But what could he do? All right, let's get to it. Let's get to the tweets. Let's get to the tweets and see what happened in the Twitter world today. And we're going to start off with, you know, if anybody knows uh, Indiana Jones and they know uh, the scene and they know that this is the best candle in the world right there. Can you imagine that? Look at that. Because obviously we know the scene from the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the ending of it, and when everybody started melting away like they did. Very gruesome scene, and I think what? The first Indiana Jones was PG, right? 
That was before they had the PG-13 rating, was it? Or no? Maybe it was PG-13. I don't know. I'm trying to remember exactly if uh, if it was or not. But, uh, yeah, I was just like, that's, that's freaking awesome right there. So awesome. Take it easy, sweetheart. I'm taking the Joker's ride here. That's okay. Is that okay? Look at this image right here. It's like, I mean, I, was he posing for this image? I guess. But, yeah, Colin Farrell. There he is. We've already been seeing um, set images and whatnot from the Penguin set, but this is a very, very clear image. I mean, I guess you, you just got to lean into it. When you're going to do outside shoots, you're going to do a shoot inside a city or something like that, you just got to lean into it and be like, hey, you know what? Just have them take pictures. It blows up on the Internet. It hypes people up. I like that jacket. It's a good jacket right there. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So, yeah, there he is right there. Oswald Cabalpot. And then we got Jackie Earl Haley right here. Obviously, uh, yesterday was a happy anniversary to, of course, I actually do have a little bit of something right here. So cheers to the, the I think it's 14 years, if I, I'm not mistaken, for The Watchmen coming out. Zack Snyder's The Watchmen. So cheers to that. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah, Wednesday was, yeah, that's why I was like, hmm, it's one of those days. But yeah, Jackie uh, Earl Haley right here, of course, who played Rorschach, said, none of none of you seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. God, that's such a good scene. Such a good scene. I just got goosebumps thinking about it and yelling it out, trying to do my best early impression, Haley impression right there, so... Yeah, perhaps the coolest project I've ever worked on. He said, happy anniversary, Watchmen. And then, uh, and then you know, and, and then it's just so awesome because Mr. Zack Snyder decided to come on Twitter and be like, Jackie, you're the best. You know what? You, got, you just got to love this. Oh, Zack, yes. Come on. We love it. We absolutely love it. We love it when Zack comes back on and just like, yes. And actually, you know, engages in stuff like this. So that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. So, you know, just a nice little moment that happened between those two yesterday. What's going on, Andre? Good to see you. Andraga. Um, okay, so we talked about Jenna Ortega on the last stream and, uh, you know, the whole Wednesday thing. And I posted the shot for it today, if you guys didn't see it. Uh, but apparently she's going to be uh, credited as an executive producer for, you know, for season two. I just wanted to know what the fuck is happening with this. What is going on in this photo shoot? <laughs> I'm like, what? Huh? Huh? What is happening? I, I don't I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure the photographer and everything had like a reason for things. And I don't know what, I don't know. I was just like, I just, when film updates used this image, I went, what is going on in this image? I she's wearing like a shiny apple thing that is covering her body and she's saying back away. I don't know. It's just pretty interesting. I'm a little teacup short and spout. That could be that. Yeah. I don't know, Hollywood, I, it's just very, very strange, very strange, but, you know, whatever, potato sack could be that, or like one of those barrels, you know, when you have the suspenders with the barrels, I don't know, shiny, it's just like, that's what caught my eye, I was like, what the hell is happening in this image right here, I just, I sometimes just, when you see celebrities pose in these ridiculous outfits and everything, and you're just going, what is happening here, what is going on, and they just do it. They just do it, you know? That's when you watch the beginning of Zoolander. They kind of talk about that. They kind of make fun of that whole thing in the beginning of Zoolander. So, is she wearing a plug? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, man, I don't know. What's going on, Jose? Jose's out there. It's very interesting, so I don't know. But, you know, whatever. And then uh, Mr. Farrell, Mr. Farrell Williams right here is asking the question that we are all wondering, uh, you know, because we're all looking forward to it. Of course, he's taking the pictures with uh, Ms. Zendaya right there. When is Dune coming out? When is Dune come out? Uh, Dune come out, I should say, not Doom. Dune. So that's pretty awesome. I love the fact that he asked that. I don't know why he asked that in the middle of people taking pictures of them. But hey, you know, Dune's coming out in November, apparently. Part two, Dune part two which I'm very much looking forward to because I love the first one. Denae Yes. 
Uh, okay, we'll talk about that later. This is interesting right here. Okay, so John Boyega is going to star in a movie called The Freshening with, with Kathy Yen. Kathy Yen, obviously we know who Kathy Yen is. She, uh, I think she wrote, she wrote Birds of Prey, right? And she had a help in writing The Flash and doing all that. So, uh, but apparently she's going to be directing this movie, a sci-fi movie. It's, it's an interesting concept. The sci-fi romance follows a world where a public health initiative causes every American to receive an injection, after which they only see others as the same race and gender as themselves. That's interesting. Very interesting right there. Like, with all the whole, you know, obviously, you know, race is always like a hot button issue. Imagine if it got taken to this level where you got an injection and you just saw everybody as... But then it's kind of like, well, what? how does that work with mixed people? Because, hey, again, like I said on Monday, you know, we don't forget that there's a lot of mixed people out there. But I'm just kind of wondering because I'm like... So is this movie going to have, like, white dudes saying, dropping N-bombs? I mean, that could be what's happening. There's got to be a scene like that, right? That's going to be interesting. I don't know. It's an interesting concept. Not going to lie. Interesting concept. So we'll see how that that plays out. But John Boyega? Okay, cool. Cool. There it is. Wearing the shirts. I figured, why not? Why not? You know, we're going to be talking, you know, it wasn't going to be one of the main topics, but I thought like, okay, why not as well talk about it? But uh, yes, that's right, guys. Mr. John Bernthal is going to be returning as the Punisher in Daredevil Born Again. Yes. And we were all kind of suspecting that was going to happen, but I'm worried. I don't know about you guys, but I'm worried. The Punisher, an R-rated character now under Disney. <laughs> I mean, I'm already worried about Daredevil slightly and now we're gonna have john bernthal and like yeah and i just don't know and as we move further along i made a little joke about this whole thing so yeah john bernthal's back and guess who's not coming back deborah ann wall and eldon henson that's right they're not coming back they're not gonna reprise their roles yeah It's just like one of those weird things. As much as we were like excited to see Charlie Cox back when he showed up in uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. And then, of course, he showed up in She-Hulk in the Daredevil costume, the new Daredevil costume, the gold Daredevil costume. I was like, all right, cool. But then after a little bit, I think some people, they're like, we just all kind of went, we're not going to get what we got on Netflix. We're not going to get that. We're going to get, you know somewhat of that i'm sure there's going to be a little bit of that but it's not going to be the same it's not going to be the same definitely not going to be the same so those two aren't going to be so they're just going to re recast them i don't know but yes this is (sighs) is this what the punisher under disney is going to be like just a water gun nerf gun you know take that take that that's the joke i made a lot of you know some people got a kick out of that but yes I'm just kind of worried about it. I'm like, The Punisher under Disney. Disney presents The Punisher, huh? (sighs) Well, I mean, they got Deadpool coming out too, right? And it's supposed to be R-rated. I mean, obviously, uh, Daredevil Born Again is not going to be, like, mature. Maybe it will be. Hopefully it would be. That'd be pretty sweet. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when it comes to all of that. We're all a little worried. All a little worried, but... Oh, yeah, I'm still worried. (laughs) Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. I was actually proud of this thumbnail right here. Do you guys realize that the the number one movie and the number two movie on the box office has the same dude in it? You know, we got Mr. Jonathan Majors. I mean, it's literally, uh, you know, it's it's Damien versus, versus Kang right here when it came to the box office. So I thought, oh, yeah. You know, so I was like, hey, showdown at the box office right there. Pretty cool uh, thumbnail. Okay, and of course we'll talk about that. Oh my God, guys, James Gunn. Look at this. A lot of people are saying James Gunn is not promoting Shazam. Oh, he's promoting Shazam. If you look at his Twitter, he's promoting Shazam. He just didn't promote Black Adam. (laughs) He didn't promote Black Adam. Not at all. 
But uh, if you look at, uh, and then, you know, we're going to be going over some of the tweets, of course, for the main topic. But I'm just saying, when people are saying that he is not promoting at all Shazam, I'm like, yeah, no, he is. It's the it's Aquaman that's going to be the awkward one when we get to the end of the year. Because, like I said, during that video where he was talking about DCU Chapter 1, he just blew right by it. But he actually said some kind words about Shazam. But, yeah. <laughs> Only because he has to. But, I mean, again, Black Adam, he was already had the, you know, I mean, he, his wife was in it. Uh, he was already working for DC, so it is a little interesting. And then speaking of uh, speaking of James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is confirmed to be the longest film of the trilogy. So, sweet. Then, of course, we'll talk about that. Oh. All right, so... Grant Gustin, all right? And I know there's there's, there's uh, stupid bullshit web, websites that try to do uh, clickbaity stuff and scoops and everything. And I even talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago when it was brought up. Fandom Wire is becoming one of the worst sites uh, when it comes to clickbaity bullshit. And it's sad that uh, there's people that actually respect, that actually promote that site, which I was like, man, that's pretty sad. But uh, there was that rumor that Grant Gustin was going to take over as the DCU Flash after the Flash comes out, replace Ezra because, you know, the whole Ezra situation. But now the dude's done. The dude's done. And this is a video of him right here hanging up. They filmed the last episode of The Flash of the Flash, I like his shirt too, by the way. His shirt is awesome. If you look at his shirt, it has like old school, like baseball card thingies. Uh, like I see Kirby Puckett, I see Ken Griffey Jr., I see Barry Bonds. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, sorry, I'm just digging the shirt. But yeah, this is uh, Grant Gustin hanging it up. Last time I I don't know if they were on the sad. I don't usually hang that. I usually go to my laundry. That's what I need to be washed now. Thanks, bud. There you go. Nine years, man. Nine years. Good. We could put away how we feel about the CW, but the fact of the matter is, nine years. Nine years. Nine years for this man, so. There you go. I haven't seen a single... Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's... It, I fell off after season three and, uh, you know, didn't really watch. And then, you know, a lot of the clips that I see were, you know, eesh. But, you know, the fact of the matter is nobody knew who Grant Gustin was. I still remember seeing the very first image of him as the Flash. It was a side profile, you know, with the cowl on. And I and I remember everybody thought it was really cool looking. It was like different, unique, whatever. And like I said, it started off well and it just got a little too crazy. But, you know, good for Grant Gustin. It was, uh, you know, I'm sure that was a very hard day, so good on him. And there's even another, there's some other pictures, too, that I'll show you right here. But let's see some more Colin Farrell on the Penguin set right there. Look at the markers. I love it that they have the markers. But, yeah, talking to uh, Renzi Feliz right here, who's uh, one of Falcone's um, offspring. So some more set images from, from, uh, from the Penguin right there. Yeah, it's going to be so good. So going to be so good. And uh, breaking news, guys, from Variety. If Austin Butler wins the Oscar for Best Lead, he would be the fifth youngest actor to ever win. Nobody gives a shit. What the? <laughs> what, the what, what the hell is this? I just love that. I'm like, what, what does that even mean? The fifth youngest? Okay. You felt like you needed to write that article headline for that, or at least the tweet? It was like, okay, somebody was like, put that. That'll be something. Who knows? Anyways. And uh, yesterday was uh, Mr. Brian Cranston's 67th birthday. That's right. Happy birthday to, uh, of course, uh, Walter White. Mr. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle, of course, who played Hal wilkerson you know various roles and uh yeah 67 years old yesterday he turned look at this guy great actor more great stuff to come of course when it comes to him 
And then, like I said, look at this. Of course, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Markers allow a computer later on to track. That. The behind the scenes for the Watchmen doing Mr. Manhattan right there. I should probably not show that. Whoops. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm going to have to go back and, um, yeah, probably should not show that. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was behind the scenes and his uh, junk was showing. So there you go. Going to have to go back and edit that. Again, I didn't even think about it. Oh, boy. So here we go. Yeah. I'll go back and edit that. <sighs> Just remove that. Yep, that's right. That's what happens on Film Junkie Live. Sometimes that happens. I was like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. His dong is hanging out. Whoa, buddy. Yep. Hopefully they don't, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. We'll just get through the rest of the stream before that even happens, before they pull it down. For the, you could barely see it. You could barely see it. It's all blue. It's fine. It's fine, guys. It's totally fine. <laughs> it totally was like, uh, I don't know why I thought in the behind the scenes featurette, they blurred it out. They did not. They definitely did not. Oh, boy. So easy there. Easy there, killers. Okay. That happens. Don't worry. It does happen. All right. Don't worry. I'll, I'll remove it later and it'll be, it'll be okay, guys. It'll be okay. Uh, but speaking of that, hey, <laughs> uh, we got the new, uh, we got a new poster for the Little Mermaid live action, which cool, I guess. There's going to be a new trailer that's going to debut during the Oscars on Sunday on ABC. So, yeah. Hate to accuse you of having a measuring contest. Is that what I'm doing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna measure against Doctor Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. What are we talking about, Doctor Manhattan? Yes, we're talking about. Do no, we're actually talking about L Little Mermaid. We're talking about Ariel right here. Ariel. Yes. And we got this new poster, which is pretty dull. A little dull, but not bad. I guess. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not even really remotely interested in that movie. I didn't even like the the original movie, so I don't know. Anyways, speaking of Daredevil Born Again, has officially begun filming, so. Uh, the poster, yeah, it's really dull and everything like that. People are calling Little Mermaid Zack Snyder's Little Mermaid because of the... Oh, jeez, that's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. So ridiculous. Yes. Watchmen parts. That's right. It's okay. I'll have to go back and edit. <laughs> it's like, oh man, his ding dong was right there. Whoops. Oh, you gotta love it. Hey, people who are um, fans of uh, the Max Fleshers, 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 Superman, you're gonna be able to get those. I use. I had these on videotape, guys. That's right, videotape. Back in my day, we had videotape. Yes, I had these cartoon shorts. On videotape, and now you're going to be able to own them on Blu-ray. Yes! Wow. So, get those when you can. That's an, yeah, that definitely is an insult to Zach, so. And then we got a, we got a video right here from the, from, from, from the Penguin set right here. Showing the, showing the Penguin Mobile, I guess, in uh, motion. So that's pretty sweet. It's going to be a little bit of a, what, a car chase, or he's driving erratically. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Fleischer. Thank you. Thank you there, Scott. Thank you. You know how bad I am with names, but uh, a name that I can pronounce correctly is Michael Shannon. And he says it was a nice revisit to General Zod when it came to The Flash. So let's see what he had to say right here about Mr. Muschietti and revisiting and everything like that. So uh, speaking of Looper, Michael Shannon shared what led him to come back as General Zod in 2023's The Flash, noting that he is initially a little confused. Oh, man, is he going to pull a Helen Mirren when it comes to the plot? Possibly. I was a little confused. I said, as memory serves me, I think I died in Man of Steel. Are they sure they got the right guy? But then they explained it to me, uh, the whole multiverse phenomenon, which 
I was a little behind the times on that. I can't say that I'm a huge consumer of this genre of films, not that I have anything against them. If I'm going to watch a movie, the odds are it's not going to be one of those, but I sure love making them. So there you go. Not a fan of really watching these movies, but he loves making them. And then he continues by talking about Man of Steel and everything, and he says, I loved making Man of Steel, and I loved working with Zack Snyder, and I felt like it was actually, in a way, a fairly important film. It was nice to revisit the character, talking about the Flash, of course. I wasn't there for a terribly long time. It was in and out in a couple of weeks, and it was nice. It was a nice way to spend a bit of summer in England. Andy's a lovely guy and a great artist visually, and I had a blast. And then talking about a little bit different, he said, I tried to get back into his skin of General Zod, of course. He's a little different in this film. He's a little more, I don't know how to put it. You don't spend as much time with him, so you don't really get to know as much about what he's thinking. It's not necessarily his movie. That's the thing with these multiverse movies. You get a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but it's really Ezra's movie. So there you go. Giving praise to people and uh, filmmakers and everything. Zack Snyder, Muschietti, all that. Saying he's a lovely artist and he had a blast and everything. So Michael Shannon... That's his thoughts talking about returning as General Zod in The Flash. You'll love to hear it. Then we got this guy right here. We got this guy right here. I mean, he's directing Superman. Just just say you're directing Superman, James. Say you're directing Superman. I don't know. Are you directing Superman? Just direct Superman. Or just, just announce you're directing Superman. Working hard on that Superman. And then, yes, guys, uh, I told you guys that I was going to, uh, that I submitted an application to get a press badge for CinemaCon. I was hoping to attend this year, and then especially since they're going to be screening The Flash for, you know, press and media and whatnot when it comes to that. And uh, I got the email, like, probably about an hour and a half, two hours, three hours ago, I don't know when it was, that, yes, I, did, I got declined. So not going to be attending CinemaCon, not going to do that unless uh, somebody out there that works for press, if they have an extra badge, then hey, hit me up, hit me up if you have an extra badge, I'm right here if you want, but yeah, sadly not going to happen, not going to happen, it's okay, it's okay, maybe something else will happen, maybe something else at the end of that week will, um, you know, will fill the void of not going to CinemaCon. You know, maybe another con will show up, you know, soon. Uh, You know, God knows. This. Okay, I didn't talk about this on Monday because I didn't really know what the heck was going on when it came to this. But apparently, and this is very interesting, um, the canceled Scooby-Doo DC crossover film with uh, Scooby-Doo and Crypto, Crypto 2, was leaked in its entirety. That's right. So apparently when it came to this canceled project that was finished, but then, of course, got cut and then they were going to make it as a tax write off or whatever the hell got leaked online. Did you guys know about this? Yeah. So a lot of people were I mean, it just kind of not a lot of people were talking about it. I remember seeing something about it, but I didn't really look at it. And then when I did after the like Tuesday, I caught wind of it. I went, oh, wow. So they actually leaked the whole thing online. And I'm just kind of going like, yeah, what's preventing certain things? I mean, I don't know how much legal trouble that all, when it all comes to this, what legal trouble that those people are going to be in if they can track that down. But, you know, you know how that is. I mean, let's just go back to the whole Deadpool test footage. Remember when that leaked out online? I mean, I'm sure that wasn't supposed to go out online for sure. And there could be legal trouble right there. But then it led to Deadpool being made, which was interesting. I don't know. But I'm just kind of going like, all right, what's preventing anybody from leaking more footage of Batgirl? Are we going to get some Batgirl footage leaked online? I would not be surprised if that eventually does happen. Now, I mean, who knows? Because it's all digital now. That's the thing. It's all digital. It's not like it's not like you could just you have to steal film canisters or anything like that. You could just pop your USB, you know, right into the port. You know, your USB storage right in the port and just download, just upload it right to that and then walk away and then somebody could do that. So I'm kind of wondering 
in the if, in the future are we gonna is there gonna it's something going to happen where something gets leaked out i mean even with the snyder cut there was stuff that got leaked out apparently there was something on a usb drive that um that somebody found in like a bathroom or something like that and then they took it and then put it up online and we got those unfinished scenes of like cyborg and the flash and we got those leaked i remember that happening when i was at a family event for thanksgiving in like 2018 or something like that i think it was 2018 was it maybe yeah it was 2018 yeah but i don't know we'll see maybe something will happen who knows and then going back to John Bernthal, he posted this on his uh, on his Instagram. So obviously he's like, yep, I'm back. He's back. Mr. Bernthal's back. Like I said, I'm just a little bit worried. Just a little bit worried about it. That's all. You know. Punisher under Disney. <laughs> I mean, I even thought like Disney presents. You know, it's like Disney, Deadpool, Disney, the Punisher. I don't know. It's all kind of, it's a little weird. It's a little interesting. Little interesting right there, so. All right, we're good. Okay, so so YouTube has not pulled the stream yet, even though you saw, you know, Dr. Manhattan's dong. Uh, you know, we're, we're good. We're good. Like I said, I, it'll be okay. It's not like the first time a dong has made it onto Film Junkie Live. Not mine. Not mine, no. That's Film Junkie Live After Dark on my OnlyFans. Oh, wait, I don't have one of those. I swear to God, I don't. Not yet. Not until things go bad. Nothing until things go bad. But uh, no, I'm just saying like, <laughs> yeah, that it has happened before. If, uh, you know, there's some people out there that might remember the infamous Spider-Man dong that showed up. And I was like, oh, man, because I, I was like around the time when Spider-Man No Way Home before it came out. And I went down Twitter, I went down the Twitter, uh, you know, under Spider-Man. And then this one dude decided, like, in a video, that posted a video where the dude just, like, jumps up. And then when he landed, his dong flopped right out. It was like, oh, boy. So, yeah. It's just like, ah. And I was like, oh, shit. But uh, it's all right. It's all right. Didn't didn't get pulled for that. You know, it's luckily YouTube is cool about, you know, you could just edit things out and be perfectly OK. Um, so we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Anyway, it's all right. So let's talk about James Gunn and some Henry Cavill. OK, let's do this. Let's talk about this. Uh, what are they going to do about the Punisher's emblem? I think they'll be OK. I mean, there's no way that it. There's no way. I mean, you have to, it has to be this when it comes to the Punisher pen, uh, emblem. It really does. Anyways, okay. So let's go through uh, some of James Gunn's recent tweets talking about uh, talking about the DCU and everything. And it's kind of funny too because he does, you know, make mention that only half of DCU Chapter One was revealed. And a lot of people were like, you know, there's headlines and I saw people like talking about it. And I'm like, I thought we already knew this. I thought he mentioned this during the announcement because we've been talking about it. The fact that it was only half, it was only half the slate of tra chapter one. So I don't know. Just it was very weird when I saw people talking about that. I'm like, I thought we already knew this anyways. So when he was talking about uh, something, when it, when it came to uh, Henry Cavill specifically right here, he said right here, like, because somebody posted this uh, article right here that said Henry Cavill is approached to play Frankenstein in the DCU. Obviously, when it comes to Creature Commandos. And James Gunn right here said, completely false. We have our Frankenstein, our first choice, and it's not Henry. Was never discussed with him. Hashtag Creature Commandos. Somebody asked, I know you're just replying to false info, but just comes off as hate towards Henry Cavill. That post had no traction anyways. And then James Gunn said, it's on various news sites. And I was asked about it. You might consider that this bile you think comes off in my post as more to do with your framing than what I'm actually saying. I've said in the past, we've discussed other roles with Henry. Just Frankenstein is not one of them. So what's one of them? That's what I'm asking you guys. If there was other roles discussed for the previous Man of Steel, what could 
Henry Cavill play in the new DCU? You know? Think about that one. Think about that one. Because I was thinking about that when I was, you know, yesterday and today when I saw the tweets. And I went, okay, what exactly could Cavill be play if he were to... I'm not saying it's going to happen. Cavill might be just like, nope, I'm not going to deal with that anymore because he was, you know, with everything that's happened in the past six years, in the past six years when it comes to DC and Warner Brothers, I can only imagine that this guy wants to move on and not even talk about it. Okay, so we, let's see what people are saying. we got Apollo from Nerdy. Jose, of course, chose Jimmy Olsen. But I'm just saying, like, is any like what roles can we play? What what roles do you think that maybe he could play? Anybody else? Come on, don't be shy. Let's talk. Let's talk. What else could he play? I mean, there's I I, I have somebody in mind. I have somebody in mind. I have somebody in mind, and I'm just kind of wondering if anybody's going to bring it up. I mean, there's a reason why I used, there's a reason why I used this image in the, uh, in the, um, in the, in the thumbnail. There's a reason why I use that image right there. Okay. So we got people, the new Constantine, Cavill's Batman, of course, jokes, Clayface, mm, Captain Adam, mm, Man Super, mm, Jor-El, mm, that's an interesting one, um, That'd be, you know, I, I mean, I wouldn't put that past, you know, you know, have the old Superman be the father of the new Superman. Why not? General Zod, Orion, Man Super, <laughs> Man Super jor -El. What about Vandal Savage? Huh? I so want Cavill to play a villain now. You don't even know, okay? When it came to the whole rumors that he might be in Fantastic Four and they were talking about him being Reed Richards, I'm like, no, make him be Dr. Doom. Do it. Let's go. Let's, he's got to, you, you got to do something where it doesn't look like Superman. And I'm just saying, Vandal Savage, imagine that. We know that he can grow the beard. And the hair and everything. I'm just saying. I'm wondering because we even talked about this on the Vox stream. I mean, the fact of the matter is, when it comes to Dark Side, you better leave Dark Side not right. You're not gonna have Dark Side right away because the Dark Side that we saw in Zack Snyder's Justice League, I don't know how you're gonna top that, Mr. James Gunn. I'm just saying. So why not go to another Justice League baddie and go with Vandal Savage? Let's not talk about Dark Side quite yet. Let's get somebody else in there, somebody else, before we get to Dark Side. That's just me. Because I, I just really would like to <laughs> we could just imagine if Henry Cavill comes back. I mean, and then of course with the whole rumor, and it's still on the rumor mill that J Jason Momoa, like, Aquaman 2 might be the end of Aquaman for him, and then he just turns into <laughs> Lobo, you know? That would be pretty interesting. You know? <laughs> yeah, that is right. Why not do that? Why not do that? Put that scar on his face, make his hair like that, beard, and everything. That's just me, though, you know? Not everybody's going to agree with it, you know? I mean, Ben at one time, he's, I mean, last week, he said that uh, the Batman's only going to get one more movie. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> just kidding, Ben. Love you. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that, I just thought that would be sweet. With all the shit that, that Cavill went through to be like the ultimate baddie. To be the baddie that Dwayne Johnson wanted to be in the new universe. Can you imagine? Oh, it's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. I, I Like I said, I think Cavill is going to be, he's, he's, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm going over here. You know, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. So it's not going to happen. But I just, that was just me going, thinking outside the box a little bit, you know, thinking outside the box. Uh, but let's see, what's, uh, what else are we talking about here? So. Let's go back to what James Gunn was saying. 
So I love the fact that he called out Fandom Wire. And of course, they deleted their tweet, which, uh, you know, I'm just saying, like, obviously, you saw the tweet where, I mean, he just basically said right here, he said, here's the Dave Batista quote from which they are, ex, you know, exploiting, you know, this headline. Honestly, I could give a fuck about being a movie star. I don't care about the spotlight. I don't care about fame, really. And then he goes, Phantom Wire? So yeah, basically Phantom Wire got called out. And it's like, again, it's sad. I mean, how many times has Phantom Wire, I've called out Phantom Wire. I'm glad that James Gunn is calling out Phantom Wire. And I'm just like, people, stop promoting Phantom Wire. How the fuck? I mean, ugh. It's sad that Phantom Wire, I mean, Phantom Wire is using their tricks, of course, to um, just, you know, the tricks to push clicks, tricks to push clicks. And then he even followed it up right here by responding. He said, in another article, they claimed I sacked Zack Snyder, a filmmaker who hasn't worked for DC in years before I got there. Yeah. So they're saying that, too. I mean, that's the thing. That's the sad part nowadays is that these websites keep on gathering an audience and people keep on promoting their stuff because they tap into the anger and outrage of fans and fanboys so they'll just like they, they know exactly how to craft something and they totally just misrepresented what dave batista said and then of course hey guess what you got james gunn you have to deal with now he's gonna call you out he's gonna call you out obviously by got here i mean as the head of the studio a few months ago but yeah, and of course he was pushing back all that. Swamp Thing was Vertical Comics, but he was really a DC character. That said, we are dealing with a couple of potential things with Vertigo. Ooh, potential things with Vertigo. I like that. Comics that I really adored. I'm not sure where you're getting in the production dates, but ba the Batman 2 is coming out as early as it possibly can, which enough time for which is enough time for Matt to do what he needs to do well uh, to make the as great as possible so talk about the Batman 2 which is supposed to be you know of course production in in November which is great and then look at all the promotion of Shazam that this man was doing retweeting he retweeted this and then he retweeted all these right here and then of course he posted his dog but yeah, so just talking about things. And then he even talked about he's uh, been really reading the John Byrne. I think it was John Byrne, right? John Byrne, Superman stuff, Man of Steel stuff, stuff from the 80s that he's really looking at when it comes to writing Superman. So, but yeah, so he said, I love it. It's a complete blast. Zachary Levi, uh, of course, David F. Sandberg and Rachel Zegler. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, I, you know, no hard feelings, Rachel. It's okay. But, uh, yeah, Alan Tudyk right there. So, yeah, he's been promoting Shazam 2 big time right here. So, don't say he's not. He is. He is. Ugh. Sorry, I got an itch in my nose. Ugh. Orgasm. Orgasm. I like that. That 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 should be the porno version. <clears throat> Orgasm, fear of the fear of the cocks, maybe I don't know. Yeah, just totally um, reaching that. Dave's equipment acting up during the week all leads up to a good vibe. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just it's for some reason my output gets a little crazy, but but yeah, there you go, guys. So I don't know. Like I said, I just I I, I just want to think out of the box when it comes to Cavill. I don't think he's going to be doing anything more DC. But I just thought, oh, okay, what would be a character that Henry Cavill could play in the new DCU? And I was like, have him play Vandal Savage. Yeah, just have him do that. And I think I, and they shouldn't go dark side right away. I think they should do another baddie. If they're going to lead into a Justice League, don't do dark side. Tease dark. You could tease dark side. Obviously, you got a 10-year plan. Tease it, but don't, don't have dark side right away. Have a Vandal Savage. Like, have somebody different. It's going to be hard to top what Zack Snyder did with dark side and Ray Porter. It's going to be hard. So, going to be very difficult. All right. Now, let's talk about Shazam. Let's talk about the internet reaction when it comes to Shazam, because, yes, that's right. A lot of people were able to give their reactions when it comes to Shazam. Fear of the Gods. Uh, I'm going to see it, obviously, big time. You know, I enjoyed the first one, really enjoyed the first one. So let's get right to it. 
Uh, okay, well, first off, we're there's going to be like uh, another day saving the life. I mean, somebody, yeah, we got a comic book little panel right here for Shazam holding a big gulp. And of course, the Shazam Ali right there taking on that dragon. But yes, we have Eric Davis right here says uh, DC is back. Shazam Fear of the Gods is much bigger and more explosive than Shazam. I uh, absolutely love the humor and the way it centers a chosen family. See, that's the thing. It's going to have that family vibe. Also, yeah, better family vibe than the Fast X, you know. Anyways, okay. Also, no origin story means the action starts right away, and it doesn't stop. Gnarly monsters, fun surprises, ton of heart, I recommend. There you go. Sean O'Connell. Oh, damn. We can react to Shazam Fury of the Gods. It's a total blast. David F. Sandberg builds on everything that worked in the original. There's a terrific Shazam action. The visuals, visual effects are excellent, and it's fun. Fun, 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 Shazam is my favorite oddball corner of the DCU. Sean did not like Black Adam at all, by the way. So we got that, and uh, what else we got? We got more stuff right there, clip from everything. Okay, we got Dorian Parks says, Shazam, Fear the Gods delivers on every level. The action is spectacular. The humor is on point, and the surprises will leave you wanting more. As a fan of the first film, I'm happy to report that this sequel is just as good, if not better. Ooh. Ah, uh, then we got him, and then of course we got uh, Mr. Brandon Davis that I saw Shazam, for the Gods. It's a really good sequel. The theme um, of found family delivers great emotional beats. Sandberg sprinkles some horror elements, which I love. He did that in the first one, while maintaining the childish joy and charm of the Shazamily. Nothing brand new, but highly entertaining. Really enjoyed. Makes sense. I don't think this movie's going to, like, break new ground or anything like that. But as long as it's enjoyable. Ben Roth, Ralph Roth, from the DC TV show says, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is endearing, hilarious, entertaining, and epic. Helen Mirren stands out as a great addition to Shazam's roster. Sandberg's film is just as engaging as the first, but here the stakes are upped. Huge twists galore. DC fans are going to love Shazam 2. Whoa. DC, DC fans are going to love... I can't even talk. DC fans are going to love Shazam. Interesting. And then there was this whole report that was going around too that a lot of people were falling victim to because, again, websites... They were saying that uh, there was like a call sheet list or whatever, casting sheet list or whatever. And then it said like there was a fake Wonder Woman, fake Wonder Woman. I saw this yesterday and I was like, oh boy. And I saw a lot of people commenting on it because everybody was just thinking it was going to be that a headless, the headless Superman situation in the first Shazam, which is by far, I, when I watched the, when I watched the first Shazam, I just want to. I just want to not watch that scene because I can't stand it. I, I really enjoy the movie, like the movie a lot, but I can't stand that. So a lot of people are going, of course, of course, there's going to be a fake Wonder Woman. It's not going to be Gal Gadot. Come on, people. You think that would actually be on a call sheet, fake Wonder Woman? No. They would just say Wonder Woman and then whatever. I, I She's in that. She's in it. Pretty sure it's Gal. Gal's going to be there. But I'm just kind of wondering, okay, so there's going to be a fake one and then there's going to be a real one. It's that's the questions that are asked. And I'm just again, I also asked a question that I've asked, I think last week I asked when with the box office projections, when do they start incorporating her into the marketing or any of the cameos in the marketing because they want to sell the movie. And if they go like, well, maybe we should put Wonder Woman. I, but you better believe that's on the table when it comes to the marketing team of this but yeah why the hell was this spoiled yeah i don't know you know how it is these movies get spoiled like crazy so anyways there the shazam well it's looking good right now hopefully it'll be good everybody's in seems like they're enjoying it but uh we'll see what how what effect that does on the box office 
Star Wars. Oh boy, we got a shake up in the Star Wars world. That's right. It's hard not to say Star Wars because, you know, I don't know, just funny to say it like that. Obviously, Saggy, who shows up on the um, on the vodka stream. Well, there it is. <laughs> uh, okay, see, so you, you came you're right in time, right on time, Saggy. I just, you know, had to go into the uh, the Boston accent to say Star Wars, Star Wars shakeup. But uh, here it is, right? But yeah, we got a little shakeup when it comes to three, three films. Again. When are we going to get a Star Wars film? When are we going to get that? It's all TV shows right now. But when are we going to get a new Star Wars film? Well, Star Wars Shake Up. Kevin Feige and Patty Jenkins movies shelved. <gasps> Taka Waititi looking to star in his own film? No! God, please, no. Bring the other two back and get rid of that one. No. Ugh. No, 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 no. Do do caca poo poo. Yes. B -b Bullshit. I'm putting on, pulling off every little drop I have right now. Get rid of it. I would gladly have Kevin Feige's and Patty Jenkins' Star Wars to come back if we don't get Takawa Titi starring in his own S Star Wars movie. Again. Taka Waititi, not all bad when it comes to filmmaking. I actually like Jojo Rabbit. I thought that was a good movie. I don't like it when he's in movies, though. Free Guy, he's the worst thing that come, when it comes to Free Guy. Ugh. And then, of course, just the half-assed shit that he did on the Thor movies. He actually made me actually appreciate Thor Ragnarok after watching Thor Love and Thunder because I went, wow, he actually kept a consistent tone when it came to the first Thor, or the first Thor movie that he did, so. But yeah, guys, so that's, uh, this is this is what's happening right here. Uh, it's been a while since we've uh, been all together like this, of course, talking about uh, Favreau and everything, and then talking about the Mandalorian, but yeah, it's just basically that. So it's not uh, for want of trying. In December of 2020, Lucasfilm Chief Kathleen Kennedy announced that Wonder Woman Helmer, Patty Jenkinson, would direct the next Star Wars movie, a one-off adventure, Rogue Squadron. But in September of 2022, god damn, almost two years later, Disney pulled the title from the schedule December of uh, from December 2023. Yeah. And then, uh, meanwhile, Variety has learned that a possible that the possible Star Wars feature produced by Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige is also no longer in active development at Lucasfilm. So, kind of makes you wonder though: was Kevin Feige producing the Rogue Squadron movie? See, that's the thing: is like, did people actually? I mean, I'm sure he was going to have some input, but was this the Kevin Feige Star Wars film? Was he just producing it? Or was he writing it? Was he planning on directing? It's what's so weird about that whole thing when they talk about Kevin Feige and everything. I'm like, I, I thought they, I thought he was, yeah. If he's just producing it, it's kind of interesting. And I was just kind of going like, well, was he producing Patties? Is it just like an all-in-one kind of thing? I don't know. But yeah, I just, I'm like, man. <laughs> You know, it's just one of those things, you know, when it comes to the Taka Waititi. Like I said, I'm not saying that it's all bad that he's made. It's just, I'm just going by his blockbusters and they just, you know, the two Thor movies are just not my favorites at all. And the fact that he said that, oh yeah, he wants a star in it. I'm like, no, don't do that either. Because man, after Free, Free Guy, Free Guy is a great movie. Luckily, Free Guy is such a good movie that I can ignore the fact that him being the baddie um so over the top so ridiculous maybe i just kind of like look at it where i could it just fits maybe in the tone of the movie because he's so over the top but he's so freaking annoying and there's nothing funny about him when it comes to that movie but yeah so i don't know we'll see who does taka have dirt on? i know right who's taka have dirt on yeah, what kind of uh, Hollywood orgies has he been to that he saw? Hey, Catherine Kennedy, what are you doing here? You know, maybe that's what happened. You know, he was he went to one of those uh, crazy underground, like you know, um, uh, eyes wide shut, fucking um, underground Hollywood sex cults, and he spotted Catherine Kennedy, and that's why they're not getting rid of him. 
Could be it. Could be it. You just never know when it comes to Hollywood. You never know. But uh, yeah. So there you go, guys. That's the shakeup when it comes to Star Wars. Star Wars. Free guy was bad. Oh man. Somebody kick somebody kick him out. Just kidding. Don't really kick him out, Eric. Um, yeah. Don't don't kick out Jose, but Jose, you're just trying to start stuff. How dare you? The Mandalorian season three, episode two. Just watched it right before it went live, of course. And uh Last week, when I talked about the season premiere of uh, of this, you know, the season of Mandalorian, I went, okay, cool, here we go, we're back. We got uh, Mando, we got uh, Grogu, they're back together, and Mando now is trying to get on the good graces uh, to the Mandalorians. He wants to get back, he wants to just basically, like, redeem himself, and now it's just kind of going, all right, well, is this what this whole season's going to be about is going to be just about that and uh, when it comes to this episode liked it better than the first episode i will say that little creepy vibes little creepy because it's called the mandalore mines and he goes to this um i guess sacred location when it comes to all this and you know it's interesting it's uh you know obviously it's just him and grogu and grogu grogu does show obviously some force powers in this one there is one little shot there's one little shot and if you've watched it there's one little shot where i went oh my god i i I started laughing and i rewound it twice because i went wow they really pulled that off (laughs) they really did that it's cheesy it's cheesy cheesy what he does yeah yeah i won't say anything in just case you haven't watched the episode i'm just saying it was like oh okay and then there was like another little trope thing that happens right after that that characters do and when it's like surprise the person you thought you were talking to is not here there's like a something that happens with what's her name um but anyways it's it's a good you know it's it's a decent episode but i'm still kind of going like all right is this it is it just about him trying to redeem himself when it comes to all this and it just kind of shows you it's like it's like, hey, maybe more. there's more to life than wearing this damn helmet all the time, dude. I don't know. Maybe there's more than that. It's like you could still wear the helmet and wear the and be a badass, but do you really have to like go by the creed all the time? I mean, I, I think maybe that's what this scene is going to be about. Is like, is it really worth trying to get back to the good graces of the Mandalorian? You know, that's what I'm kind of wondering when it comes to all this. But I guess we'll see. But, you know, still enjoyed the episode. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it more than the first one, to be honest. So we'll see where else it goes. We'll see where else it goes. But there you go. There's my review right there. It's become a Midalorian <laughs> creative. This is the way. This is the way. All right. Let's get to uh, questions here. Let's go ahead and look over at uh, YouTube and see if any questions were asked. Oh, we got one. We got one here. Hold on. Let's see. What does it say? What does it say? Okay. It doesn't say anything. YouTube's been a little wonky lately. I will say that. It says one comment, but I can't click on it. All right. Well, that's not happening then. Sorry. If somebody actually asks a question on YouTube, I apologize. For some reason, YouTube is not letting me look at it. Or they deleted it? I don't know. Maybe that's what happened. Who knows? All right. Let's go to Twitter then. Let me refresh just in case. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, we got Tet right here. I still haven't seen it yet, but I know how much you love Brendan Fraser. Still haven't seen what? You haven't seen a Brendan Fraser movie? Hey, Mitchell, did you know I can do some cool animal impressions? Really? Do a cat. Now do a whale. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life. That's pretty good. All right. I like that. (laughs) 
I still haven't watched The Whale. I think I'm, I'm going to watch it this weekend for sure. So, yeah. That's pretty good, though. That was a pretty good Brandon Fraser impression. Eric. Got to say, Dave. Why are we so sure C- Cavill's potential other roles in the DCU would all have to, to involve acting? Maybe he'll see him direct something for Gunn in the near future? Yeah, I mean, there's always that. Has he expressed that? Or, you know, has he expressed that he wants to direct? I mean, Henry directing Sa- Superman Legacy might be a bit of a stretch. Oh, that's a big stretch. No way that Henry Cavill's going to direct that. I mean, they're going to, yeah, that's way too much pressure. To have his directorial debut to be Superman Legacy, that's a lot. That's way too much pressure. But maybe he'll make something in the future. I don't know. Mr. Nobody. Hey, Dave, what do you think is the likelihood that Zachary Levi Shazam will get rolled over to Gunn's DC verse, but with a slight reboot post Flashpoint? 20%, 50%, or 80%? I don't think we're going to see Zachary Levi Shazam again, to be honest, uh, unless it does crazy numbers. Uh, Devon Wooter. Hey, Dave, I will lose my mind if Zod says Neil. Before Zod in the Flash movie, will you freak out? And I just bought Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse on Blu-ray, and I watched it really. What is your favorite scene from the uh, movie? I mean, there's it's hard to pick which one. I mean, just the animation style is so great. So great. So great. So there you go. There's questions right there. Guns DC Universe, huh? You watch the Mummy trilogy? Yeah. It's not bad. Third one's kind of eh. Second one's kind of eh, too, to be honest. The first one's great, but, you know. But anyways, yeah. Whoa. Somebody, somebody subscribe. That's cool. I think that's what that noise was, right? Anyways, thank you, uh, what is it, Michelle, for uh, subscribing. Uh, Levi Zachary Dunn. Yeah, he's not going to come back, most likely, but still rooting for the movie. I like David F. Sandberg. I like Zachary Levi. I know he's supposed to, you know, he's, people think he's like an evil SOB now, but hey, what could he do? And, uh, you know, regardless of uh, Miss Rachel calling me out on Twitter, it's fine. It's fine. She should have. Exactly. She did exactly what she should have. I uh, hold no qualms. Uh, Ashner Angel will be Shazam. Well, I mean, he's pretty much, I mean, what is he, like 27 now? You know, so he might as well be, but. I saw some people actually pitch that, and I went, that's not a good idea. He still very much looks like a kid. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens, but I don't know. But, yeah, when it comes to the Cavill thing, well, I don't think anything's going to happen. I just thought it was interesting. I was like, what could be discussed? And I just was thinking so much out of the box. So much, I was trying to think as much out of the box as possible. It was like, what, I want him to play a villain. I just want him to play a villain. I mean, he played a villain in Mission Impossible, and I just want him to play a villain again. I do. I want him to do that and have a beard, not be recognizable, because let's face it, if he's clean-shaven with his hair all nice and parted, he just looks like Superman. And that's what happens when you when you get cast as Superman. It's like people are going to look at you as Superman. I'm sure a, Chris, a Christopher Reeve movie right off the top of your head after Superman. It's hard to do that. You know, look what happened to Brandon Ruth. seemed like nothing really came from that. Dean Cain. Um, I mean, Tom Welling, I mean, it just seems like when you take on Superman, you, there's a good chance that, you know, that's it. I mean, you're like up front, you're Superman, you're the guy, you're the guy. But then all of a sudden when you're not Superman, people are just like, oh yeah, you know, and you still can have a career because obviously those guys still have careers for sure. I mean, Brandon Ruth got like a, uh, a redemption when he came back as the Atom in, uh, you know, Legends of Tomorrow, which is great. And then, of course, he came back as Superman and with the Kingdom Come suit, which is great, too. But, yeah, it's just like one of those weird things. But I think, you know, that's why when it when it came to Mission Impossible, I almost think like when it come when it comes to the whole mustache thing there, you know, I, it was probably I'm one. I, I and that's one of the things that I probably would ask Henry Cavill when it comes to that character in Mission Impossible why the mustache was it because it just added something to the character and the fact that it took away from if we just have you clean shaven you're gonna look like superman 
should we just, you know, do something? And there's been other roles that he's taken on too, where he's had beards and everything. It's just like, you know, because was again, if he's clean shaven and his hair's nice and slicked, he's just going to look like Superman. He is, but eh, it's whatever. Vandal Savage is perfect. Big bad for, yeah, I know. And that's what I keep on saying. I'm like, Vandal Savage, Vandal Savage. Let's do that. If you're going to do D, you're going to do Justice League. Let's do him as opposed. And then, of course, you know, you could tease Darkseid, but let's not bring Darkseid back right away, especially how awesome it was in Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's going to be hard to top that. But but I, and then I was just like, well, you know, Cavill. I mean, I think he could totally pull off Vandal Savage. So but I don't think any of that's going to happen. Who knows? But just something I put out there. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We'll do a members-only stream right after this. You guys can pick my brain, and, uh, you know, we'll try to give you some tea, whatever tea. But uh, if you want to become a member, join uh, the Film Junkie membership program on YouTube if you want to do that. And make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, do all that. And uh, members, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Everybody else, I'm going to go see. I'm not going to see Scream 6 tomorrow. I'm going to see 65 tomorrow. So look forward to my first reaction review of 65. That'll be up tomorrow. And then, of course, I'll see you guys on the Vodka stream on uh, Friday. And we'll talk about all the craziness and everything that, uh, that that this week had. So, all right, guys. Love you. Members, I'll see you guys soon. And everybody else, talk to you later. Later.